San Francisco 49ers blew a 10-point fourth quarter lead and were outscored 21 to nothing in the fourth quarter by the Kansas City Chiefs along with Patrick Mahomes. And my guest today, Colin. Hello. I want to know, did the 49ers beat themselves or did KC just overpower them and beat them? KC just overpowered and beat them. I think it took a while for their offense to actually get going. Um... I predicted that San Francisco's defense was going to, you know, come alive. And I think they did for the first three quarters. They were playing very well. Um, it almost looked like Patrick Mahomes was, like, panicking at some points. There were a lot of underthrows uh, during a stretch in the third quarter. Um, after half when it was tied and then uh, San Francisco went up to a big lead, you started to see Patty Mahomes kind of be a little frantic in the pocket. Um, he was underthrowing guys on like six consecutive throws. I saw like he was underthrowing them. Like even if they didn't catch it, they were still having to work for the catches. And I think Patty Mahomes really panicked. But in the fourth quarter, they seemed to pick it up. Their defense, Kansas City's defense, played outstanding. Like halfway through the third quarter, into the fourth, their defense kept them in the game. We're going to have an interesting podcast because I wholeheartedly disagree with what you just said. You don't... Okay. The 49ers beat themselves. 49ers the 49ers, beat 49ers themselves. are at fault for that game. Okay. And the main reason is Kyle Shanahan because Jimmy G had a decent first three quarters minus the interception. That was bad. That was an awful but interception. I don't know why Jimmy G had a bad fourth quarter. And Kyle Shanahan... Overuse Jimmy G. We know we know Jimmy G. What he can do. Jimmy G. I've I say this, say this so much. He's not going to make your team better, but he's not going to make your team worse. But Kyle Shanahan tried to overuse Jimmy G, which he hasn't done all season. I will agree with that. They they only rushed the ball twenty times yesterday. Twenty times. Jimmy like G. Them. Threw the one thirty threw the ball thirty one times against the Packers. He threw the ball eight times, and they killed the Packers. They only rushed the ball 20 times against KC, whose rush defense is 26th in the NFL yeah. from the regular season. Yeah. When they did run the ball, like uh, like one of their, their late drive in the fourth quarter, they ran the ball with was Mostert, five yard gain. He was playing well for them. I thought if they kept they, 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 him but the they ball. didn't give him the ball. You know, do you want to know how many yards they averaged? Per rush attempt. Wasn't it like seven at one point? Seven. Yeah. It was seven. It was that's like crazy. Six point nine seven. And they only did that set or sorry twenty times. Another thing was Shanahan. End of the end of the first half, he re- he did not call a timeout. KC, as they were punting, blew off. I think it was at like a minute fifty three, and they got it down to fifty nine seconds for for San Fran to have the ball, and they didn't have enough time to go through the attack. A lot of it was, well, Shanahan cleared it up after the game. He said that. He didn't want to give the ball back to KC if they, you know, could not get a first down. Yeah. But then in the fourth quarter, they didn't run the ball and they threw the ball, giving the ball back to KC too many times to tie yeah, the they game did. and take the lead. So if at the end of the first half when it's tied, you were worried about giving KC the ball back with like a minute left, why were you not scared to give yeah. them the ball back? I will back agree with later you on the, the point that I think Kyle Shanahan's play calling was under par to say the least um i think when you're up by 10 in the fourth quarter you don't go to something that is not your bread and butter that's what i mean if you're gonna lose you lose from what you do best you don't try something new the houston rockets don't go out and try to play through the paint and win a game and lose they live and die by the three yes the 49ers should live and die by the run and they 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 died by the passing game i think when we saw Raheem Mostert get the ball, he was explosive at some points. He was getting, you know, like first downs. He was getting like seven, eight yards a rush. He was playing really, really well. Um, I don't know what Kyle Shanahan was thinking. I think, and this is the second time. Like, I don't know if you brought it up yet, but when he was on Atlanta, oh, he was calling oh, those plays for Matt oh, Ryan. It's the thumbnail. And it's the thumbnail. I don't know if Kyle Shanahan was just, it was here's, here's, It was in the moment. I have, or? I, have, I have a stat. I have a stat about this. Okay. It's the thumbnail. The thumbnail says... 28-3, 2010. Because Kyle Shanahan 
led offenses because Kyle Shanahan was the play caller for Atlanta's offense when they when they were up 28-3, and he was the play he's the offensive play caller for the current 49ers. With 10 minutes left in Super Bowls, they have zero points. The opposition teams, if you count overtime, 46 points with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. When you are nursing a lead in the fourth quarter in the biggest game of your life, you you, run the football. You run the football, you pound it down the middle, you run the clock, you prevent the other team from using their best weapon, which is Patty Mahomes. You you do not want to give Mahomes any more possessions. He was scared to give Patrick Mahomes a ball with a minute left in... Uh, in the first half, I, they had the three timeouts, so it was it was a good amount of time for Patrick Mahomes to go to work. But then in the fourth quarter, throwing the ball, playing you know scared play calls, giving Patrick Mahomes the ball back, so it was completely contradictory to what he was saying. Yeah. Um, they they don't score when they're in the fourth quarter. Like, like sure, Patrick Mahomes had a great fourth quarter, but you but this was like the first off game of Patrick Mahomes' career. How did you not take advantage of that fact? It was looking like that. And I said that KC can win the game with an off Patrick Mahomes, and that was the case, but the 49ers did not exploit that Patrick Mahomes was not playing well, like uncharacteristically missing throws, underthrowing people. Uh, like he underthrew Tariq Hill on that that on long first down a play. A few occasions, uh, he even though even though on play. the very next throw he bombed it downfield, uh, he underthrew that one. The the first interception was like he basically threw it to the to the DB, and then his second interception he he underthrew his player, another interception. So we thought that the moment got the better of Patrick Mahomes. But then, when the moment grew to its biggest point, that's Fourth when quarter. he took over. Yeah. And that's why Patrick Mahomes is the best QB in football. But you had Patrick Mahomes on an off night. They had him on the ropes. That's like, what I'm saying. And, 40- and and they had the interception in the fourth quarter when you thought, oh my goodness, like, the, the Casey needs to score on this play. And you see that then picture the of them doing the neighborhood celebration? Like yeah, after yeah. The, yeah, like, like you think they, everything's they, going right. But this is what I'm saying. Time. How did the 49ers lose that game after forcing a turnover... Uh, almost in the red zone when you when we thought Casey had to win, and I haven't even gotten to the point where it was twenty to twenty four. Forty nine ers were threatening; they were going down the other way, and I we're we, we're on our seats because you know we have a lot of money riding on Casey oh, yeah, winning this game. Jimmy G has Emmanuel Sanders wide open in the backfield. Beat his double coverage is wide open, and I'm sorry, but in a Super Bowl, you make that throw. Yeah. When I saw Emmanuel Sanders wide open. I thought game. I saw it. I'm like, that's game. Oh, that would have been game. Huge. That would have been huge game. Huge overthrow. What there would have been some instances um, when Casey was making their comeback where Garoppolo was like looking just panicked in the pocket. He had Kittle wide open down yes. the middle on like yes, at least two occasions. That of, like, you have to make those throws. When like, Jimmy G. I agree with you on a certain like standpoint where it's like, Garoppolo, you just have like, I think we just see the like. Not like how bad Garoppolo is, but we just see like Jimmy G's he's not got a real cap. Deal. He's not the he's real got deal. a cap to him. If you know Jimmy what I mean? G was a real deal, he makes the Super Bowl winning throw there. And, I, and I, you know what? It, you can say it's hard to put on one play, but I am putting it on one play because that is the that is the Super Bowl if you make that throw. Yeah, I think, but I, like I do want to touch on like the greatness of Patty Mahomes in that fourth quarter, like. There were so many third and longs that he just managed to somehow convert. Like, that's what I mean. He you gets think it done. the play is over, and he just he makes the play happen. And that and that even can, he you ran can clearly. For the, there was one he ran for the first down. You could clearly he, see the difference between a great quarterback and an average quarterback in that football game. Yeah. Take every other piece away. Look at the quarterback themselves. You can definitely tell who the better quarterback. And, and when Jimmy G, like okay, if Jimmy G. Jimmy, before he gets a snap, he knows who he's throwing to. But if he gets a snap and he can't throw to that one guy that he knows, he he's doesn't have to, the ability to he create can't go, for himself. He goes, yeah. "Oh shit, who am I going to throw to now?" He can't just, you know, okay, he's he's not open. Who am I going to throw to now? He panics, but panics, but, but and you like, saw it. Kyle Shanahan should know that that's not what his quarterback is comfortable in. They are comfortable with doing RPOs, handing the ball Play off, action, fly sweeps, pitches to Mostert, like letting your guys, like letting. Letting like running letting Garoppolo with Debo. literally just be there and be like, everyone do your thing. Like they don't they're, make like do not let 
Jimmy Garoppolo be the reason why you're gonna win or lose that, that, the game. That's and that's what I said in our prediction episode. I said, dude, like, don't make this about Jimmy G. A day like, if it is about Jimmy G, it's not gonna happen. They're like, they're gonna run the ball. Patrick Mahomes is gonna decide the game for KC, but you know, it's gonna be the running game. But they didn't even resort to the running game. Like, how do you lose doing what you did so successfully all like not doing what you did successfully all season? That's like, you know, you did. you run the ball, KC shuts you down, even though they are the one of the worst. By the way, again, one of the worst rush, rush defenses. defenses yeah. Twenty six best in the NFL, and yet you refuse to run the football. Like, I understand, like. It was working, too. It wasn't like it wasn't working. Like, there were some KC players after the game saying, thank God they stopped running the football. I know. <laughs> there were literally KC players saying that in interviews. Like, <laughs> they were scared of your run game, and you didn't run the were, football. And there you were even San Francisco out. players who were really upset with uh, uh, Kyle Shanahan after the game. Like, I don't know, man. Like, when you're the man, and you're controlling all those weapons that San Fran has... I don't recall seeing much of Debo Samuel at all in the fourth quarter. Like, even if you're not going to run, at least give it to the guy that's been giving you the most production. Oh, like, Debo Samuel's eating. He had, uh, like, let me, pull up, let me pull up Debo Samuel's rushing stats. 53 yards on three rush attempts for Debo Samuel. Very good. Very good. We had him as a potential MVP pick. We think he could have won it if San Fran had won the football <sighs> I game. I think he could have won it. I, yeah, I think you know, that would have been a, a good, but I mean, I, I got more money off of the, the Chiefs, the <laughs> Chiefs winning, but they like the, the play calling let them down. Like I, I can't see how you think it's KC winning the winning winning the game, like even up twenty ten they didn't score. Like yeah, but we've seen this from Kansas City before. Look at them when they were playing um, Houston, Houston, yeah. But still, that that was Houston's undoing as well, and in, 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 to a certain degree. So, our, okay, that was more on KC, but this is different. There were like it was the fourth quarter, up by ten points, and they did not run the ball. Like, like look at the Titans against the Patriots, up by like one point. They blew off seven minutes on one of their drives because they, like, ran, ran it the ball. straight run, run, up run, run, the run, gut. Run. Yeah. They ran the football. They didn't give time to the Patriots' offense. And Tom Brady is nowhere near the level of Patrick Mahomes. So they're throwing the ball and giving the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. And their defense, who's already tired from the last time they had to stop that guy, yeah. they got to go out and try to stop him again? Yeah. They had multiple three and outs in and, the fourth quarter, which you do not want. And, and a highlight of the fatigue that was uh, infested upon the 49ers defense is that last TD. Because Damian Williams, that was a little too easy. That was a burn. That last two t- t- TD. I didn't think he was going to score. And then he got around the edge. We were all like, oh, really? He's about to score? Yeah. Okay. And then, I guess the game's over. But how much does that highlight the fatigue on that defense? They were That's what I'm down. saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And even still, after all of the mishaps, all of the bad play calling, Jimmy G has Emmanuel Sanders wide open for a TD, and he does not hit him. And him. that is why the 49ers lost the football games. They did not call the game well. There was some poor clock management, uh, whether it be the end of the first half not calling a timeout or not running the football. Uh, what was I saying? I said time You're, management, uh, Jimmy, uh, bad play calling, time management, Jimmy G. Jimmy G letting you down in the big moments. The three reasons why the 49ers did not win the Super Bowl. Obviously, Pat Mahomes showed up in the fourth, but he didn't show up all that other time that you should have capitalized on. 49ers beat themselves. I'd say that's a fair take. Um, I agree with you to a certain point. Um, I do think that the 49ers did let themselves down to a certain degree, but I don't think that should take away from the greatness that we oh, saw obviously, from Patrick obviously Mahomes. Obviously, it goes both ways, but yeah, if, I have I to, if it's one or the other, I, I think 49ers. I'm just going to say, man, like Patty Mahomes... In that third quarter, I was like, man, he's going to pull a, a Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, like, you did say that. I and thought I was it was like, going to happen. I feel the same. Like, I, like Dan Marino flashed through my mind. Like, the, you know, So much talent. There's so much talent like you there. Think, like, like, you just oh, want oh it to goodness, all go like, properly. Like the one like, time, like, well, for the Trevor Lawrence comparison, the one game he doesn't show up is the big game. Yeah, but his Trevor, receivers like, were making plays, like, though. Like, the, like, I, 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 I'll bring up the Dan Marino point again. Um Dan Marino got to a Super Bowl when he was 24, I think. Didn't he win. Was young. And we were like, okay, well, I mean, I wasn't there, but people were like, well, he's going to get to more. He'll win one eventually. Never did. Never did. Never yeah. got to a Super Bowl again. Yeah. So I'm thinking in my head, like, like, oh my goodness, like, could this be. Because I, I, like, when Patrick Holmes threw that second interception, I'm like, 
man, the 49ers are going to win this football it was game. Like, it was like triple coverage, too. Yeah. It was like... His guy was not even open. He just he, he had just him though. Yeah. He under he underthrew him, and and I'm like, man, like I think the 49ers are gonna win this. 49ers are gonna win this game now, and then they still came back. Like that's what I'm saying. That's just man. That's just Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Like, you yeah, seen... there, there was there was the one the one play third and fifteen. Patrick Mahomes takes like over ten steps back, winds up and pounds it like forty five <laughs> yards downfield. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're like, oh my goodness. We have a game now. Yeah, 2010. Uh, Tyreek Hill's just wide all of a sudden, open. All of a sudden, almost Boom, in the red yeah. zone. Oh. Punch it in. All I'm saying is, Patrick Mahomes, I'm so upset you did not rush for your second touchdown. You had a lot of money right on. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about our bets. Yeah, Let me go we, first. Let me go first. Okay. I, I posted a lot about it on the, the social media pages. You were pretty pleased with yourself. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I'm pleased with myself, and I have a right to gloat because other than my MVP picks... I was five for five on my bets. That is and true. you count MVP, because I did pick Patrick Mahomes to win MVP, I'm six for six. And I put a couple bucks on like some sleeper MVP picks, but Patrick Mahomes' earnings off of him winning MVP uh, trumps the money that I put on the MVP pick. So I'm giving myself six for six. I got under on 119.5 seconds on the national anthem. I got- 159 seconds. No, no, 1.59 minutes, 119 seconds. Oh. Right. 119 and a half <laughs> seconds. I got the under there. I can pick tails on the coin toss. I had Chiefs covering minus one spread. I had the Chiefs covering a minus one and a half spread, as well as the under 53 and a half total points in the game. Also, the big one, the orange Gatorade shower. Oh my I God. tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell you on the betting <laughs> podcast. You go check it out a couple days ago. You can see. I tried to tell you about all these picks. I told you Demi Lovato can't sing. She wasn't going to go long. <laughs> I told you that the Chiefs were going to win this game. And I told you that Super Bowls do not have high-scoring games no matter who is playing. And I also told you Orange is going to be the Gatorade shower. Oh I told y'all. you didn't, If you didn't listen, you, you lost money. And that's how it worked. And then I got all the way to the MVP picks where I had Patrick Mahomes as my cover for my sleeper picks, which covered up the money I put on other MVP picks. Colin, you you also cashed out. Oh, by the way, $80 in profit from the game. You also cashed out. I I didn't make quite as much, Jacob. I made $40. Um, so my initial idea for the betting on Super Bowl is I was going to make a little, like a bunch of small bets. So I bet $35. Um, I think I had like 14 or 15 bets, whatever. I did like uh, two and a half dollar bets, mm. and I had a very big one. I had a a fifty two dollar return on Kyle Juszczyk scoring the first touchdown for the 49ers, which was huge. It was to score the first, not even just score TD, to score the first. To score the first team touchdown. Wow! And he got and the guy missed his tackle, and he got it. That was crazy. I was so yeah, happy. Yeah, you So from that bet, I made all my money back right away. I invested thirty five, and I just made back fifty two. Um, <clears throat> I had also made a bet for, again, $2.5 in, this would be a return of $127 if Patrick Mahomes rushed for two touchdowns. Mm. Early in the game, it was the first touchdown. He got it. He got it. I was he got like, one. oh my he got God. One. He got one. I was like, oh my God, like, it's still the first quarter. We have so much time. Like, this is great. And you guys were telling me to cash out. I was like, no, no, no. Like, I, I want to wait. But then, because I, I thought KC's offense was just... I didn't know they were going to go take a nap. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that they were going to go... Yeah. Anyways. And then, at the end of the game, he has, like, two plays where he has the ball and he's, like, running towards the end zone. Yeah, and he's, yeah, like, yeah. on the two-yard line. I'm like, just go. Just go. Was, Put your body on the line, it, please. It, it's similar to Roman Bet uh, on Derrick Henry scoring two TDs against uh, KC. And he had an early one. And then he had another one where he got stuffed on the one yard line, <laughs> and then they ran the trick play to like the uh, where like Henry the, threw it or whatever. No, 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 no. It was the one where the like the the O lineman. Uh, they ran the trick play where the O lineman caught the touchdown. Yeah, that was when Henry threw the ball to no, him. No, 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 not that one. That was the game before. That was the Baltimore game. This oh. is the KC game. But regardless, like some bets 
you cash out on it, you know. But like, I understand oh, the the possible payout you were thinking of. Payout. No, I understand. But hey, you still you still cash. Uh, yeah. In. So I had that one, which I was pretty bummed about. But I, I already made my money back at this point, so I wasn't too mad. Yeah. And then I also made sixteen dollar return on a two point five dollar bet on the Kansas City Chiefs winning by seven to twelve. I was gonna cash that out in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. The cash out was like, I don't know, like two bucks. I was like, okay, like I get the money back for the bet. I ended up keeping it. Yeah. And I was like, hey. And they won by it. eleven. Let's yeah. go. And you got it. So I'm. So right now, I'm in my bank account. I have sixty nine dollars. Nice, Not nice in my bank man. account, but in my bet, in my bet three six five account, I have nice, sixty nine dollars. Nice, nice. So it's the perfect amount. Well, was, there you go. Hey, we know what we're talking about when it comes to betting. Sometimes yeah. you need advice. Come to the uh, English crowd. Uh, unless it's college, because we bet. We all bet pretty heavily on Clemson to beat. Um, LSU that didn't come off, but hey, I'm I'm back I'm back in the green with with the Super Bowl. I did not have any incorrect bets during the game. No bet. No. I had multiple, but I knew that was gonna just, come. I just I just yeah. I, the only ones I had the MVPs that were off, but no matter who won MVP, I was getting my money back on my MVP bets. That's that was the point of it, yeah. and so I consider that a W. Six Ws out of six bets for Jacob. I cashed in. I had some arguments. I had some discussions. Uh, some people were texting me, telling me uh, that they're betting elsewhere. I'm like, okay. And then after the game, I was first to let them know. The big one, the orange. I'm so I was so Gatorade pumped about the orange all. Gatorade shower. I can't believe I got that one right. But to sum up the episode, uh, what I'll leave you with from my stance is that Jimmy G is not capable of winning you the football game on his own. Nope. Kyle Shanahan made the mistake of trying to get Jimmy G to win the game on his own, and there was a lot of poor play calling by Kyle Shanahan. He didn't learn. He did not learn after the, the worst Super Bowl comeback like to, to have lost in history after being 28 from being up 28-3 to three against the, the Patriots, eventually losing by six points in that one. Did not learn his lesson. History repeated itself, and Patrick Mahomes got busy. Patrick Mahomes has the ability to one day become the greatest, or yeah, the greatest quarterback. I we've think ever seen he has, if he's not already the most talented. He definitely has the possibility to do that. Um, I just want to say, Patty Mahomes balled out in that fourth quarter. Respects Patrick Mahomes. Big respects Patrick Mahomes. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, San Fran did kind of lose it for themselves, but. I'm also going to give credit to Patty Mahomes oh, in Kansas City, full, a lot, Andy Reid. I think, I think Big Red uh, fully deserved his Super Bowl. Um, I hope he's enjoying many, many cheeseburgers with his and, wife and his trophy wife and his trophy wife. Um, yeah, I think KC for next year. I see KC as the favorites again. I don't see why you wouldn't see them as the favorites. Bearing in mind that they keep all, or at least most of the piece that they have now. I know they might lose Sammy Watkins. They're going to have to pay out for Patrick Mahomes. They're yeah, going to gonna have to pay Patrick Mahomes. You know Damian Williams is going to be looking for a pay now because he showed out in the Super Bowl as well. Um, I think Kansas City has a really bright future. That AFC, I think we might be seeing the beginning of the next power shift. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the, the Transitioning Watson. from you know Brady, Roethlisberger, Breeze, Rogers. Breeze. Rogers, even like Philip Rivers, if you want to add them in, like I, now I don't want to add him in. Okay, but like he he's <laughs> he's been in there for a while, like. And then now, now we we're have Watson, Jackson, Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Uh, it's a bit of a different. Okay, it's a bit of a different era. He was in the middle of the he's switch. In the middle. He's, he's in the middle. He's in the middle. Yeah, he, he saw them both. He's already got his Super Bowl. I don't, he's gonna get it, another one. Before yeah. Him. Yes. Okay. Hey well, man, next year. Season. All I'm saying is watch out for the Seahawks. We're getting Will Disley back. We're getting our starting center back. We're getting our left tackle back. We're getting Carson back from injury. Getting Chris Carson, TJ Procise, Rashad Penny. Those. But do you get Jadavion Clowney back? Honestly, I feel like I would not be upset if we lost Clowney. Obviously, I'd like to keep him. But Clowney was hurt for a lot of the year, and we won without him. Um, we're a team of next man up. We're resilient. We fought through injuries all year and look and we made it to the nfc uh divisional and i'm pretty proud of that and i think you know russ is still in his prime he's got a few years left in his prime i think we're just gonna keep getting better all right so we will end it there thank you to colin for being on this episode let us know uh if you cashed out on any bets yeah uh, your takes in the super bowl in the comments or on twitter or instagram at mtrack pdc get your merch get your merch the link is in the description for that get your stickers yeah, get your mugs. There's a couple merch purchases coming through in the last uh, couple weeks. 
Um, you can subscribe on YouTube, follow Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and as usual, we post every single day, so keep coming back for daily content. We will see you again tomorrow. Thank you.